Welcome back to the third hour of our show. What is the future of our economy, of our environment, of our world, if we don't wake up to some of the very real and pressing problems confronting us, particularly and specifically with regard to carbon dioxide and, and with regard to global warming in our environment? Lord Nicholas Stern is on the line with us. He is a, a, a member of the House of Lords in the United Kingdom. Uh, is Baron Stern of Brentford. He's also Professor Nicholas Stern, the IG Patel Chair and Chairman of the Grantham Institute on Climate Change and the Environment, Director of the India Observatory at the London School of Economics and Political Science. He was the Chief Economist and Senior Vice President of the World Bank from 2000 to 2003, Head of the United Kingdom's Government Economic Service from 2003 to 2007, and Head of the Stern Review on the e Economics of Climate Change from 2005 to 2007, uh, professor, uh, professor Stern, uh, Lord, I see if, where do we? Uh, Lord Nicholas Stern, welcome to the program. Thanks very much, Dom, and please feel free to call me Nick. That'd Thank be absolutely fine. Thank you. That's that's. Uh that's that's that seems very unnatural. But thank you. With thank less you, than a mouthful. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I remember when the Stern report came out in, as I recall, mid two thousand seven, uh, and just created a, a worldwide furor. Certainly a furor in your country and ours, suggesting that if we looked at the cost benefit ratio between doing something about climate change now versus doing nothing, that doing nothing would be economically disastrous and stupid. Am I, uh, uh, in, in my own way, doing a reasonable job of paraphrasing your report? Absolutely. And the uh, story is that if we go on emitting uh, greenhouse gases as we are, uh, and they're, they're growing, of course, uh, these emissions, if we go on under business as usual, we will take uh, the planet to temperatures at the end of this century, beginning of next, that we haven't seen as a planet for 30 million years. It would be five degrees centigrade, nine degrees Fahrenheit above the middle of the 19th century, which is usually the reference period here. Mm -hmm. And that would take us back to uh, a world that preceded the evolution of our species. But, Absolutely. And, uh, we've, been, we've been around only 100,000 or so, maybe 200,000, depending on what you think is sapiens in Homo sapiens. But right. this is 30 million years since we've seen those kind of temperatures. So now you have you have published a book. This is a brilliant new book that uh, out by by Nicholas Stern, The Global Deal, the subtitle Climate Change and the Creation of a New Era of Progress and Prosperity. You are suggesting in this book, sir, that it is possible for us if we make the appropriate investments and that these actually will be single digit percentages of GDP around the world, uh, particularly for the four major regions of the world, the US, the European Union, China and India that if we make the investments in stopping global climate change and reversing the the levels of carbon dioxide going into our atmosphere, that it will actually pay dividends to us down the road? Well, first, it will um, give us the huge dividend of radically reducing the risks of catastrophe. Right. Um, the biggest degrees, dividend is we get to survive. Yeah. Um, okay. Five degrees centigrade, nine degrees Fahrenheit would transform the planet. Um, hundreds of millions of people would have to move, the patterns of rivers would change, uh, sea levels would rise, many areas would be deserts, others would be flooded, others would be battered by hurricanes. Hundreds of millions, probably billions, would have to move and that would lead to perpetual conflict. So the first return through to that investment was to be to radically reduce those risks. Um, but it'd be much more than that. Um, in the process of developing the new uh, technologies, and we can see many of them coming, and there'll be many more coming, these low-carbon technologies, will create a whole wave of innovation which will drive growth over these next two or three decades. It'll be like the railways or, or electricity. And more than that, uh, when we find low-carbon growth, and we can see roughly what it looks like, and we'll find lots more out along the way, it's going to be um, very likely more energy secure. It's going to be less dirty in the conventional sense of, of dirty. It's going to be um, quieter, uh, safer, more biodiverse. So mm -hmm. it's, the transition itself will be a dynamic period of discovery, and the low-carbon growth will be very attractive and will reduce radically the risks of, of catastrophic transformation of the planet. It's, it's an investment of 1% or 2% of GDP for a few decades, with absolutely tremendous returns. 
We're talking with Nick Stern, his new book, The Global Deal, Climate Change and the Creation of a New Era of Progress and Prosperity. I found it interesting uh, in your book, the sub, the, in, in your introductory chapter, there was a subtitle, uh, The Nature of the Market Failure. And you talk about market failures taking many forms, and the goal of economic policy is simply correcting these market failures. And then you go through the four externalities that associated uh, that with these market failures um, in the in the three three and a half or four minutes or so that we have here. Can you give us an overview of how we got into this mess in the first place and how that might illuminate how we get out of it? Well, markets fail if they don't give the right signals. Um, we rely on markets to allocate resources efficiently so that if something is very costly it's uh, to produce, uh, it's seen by consumers as very costly to produce and they're careful with how much they buy and they buy it only if it gives them a personally returns and satisfaction above what they pay. So it's terribly important that prices reflect costs and if they don't reflect costs they um, uh, the market is failing because it's giving a false signal. It's telling you that something is much cheaper in terms of uh, what goes into it than it really is. Mm. Now, if you don't pay for the damage you do uh, when you emit greenhouse gases, um, that is a market failure. It means that uh, you're getting something for free which actually is, uh, is seriously costly. Right. And that's a market failure. So the job of policy is not to abandon the markets. I mean, we don't abandon the banks just because they've uh, performed pretty badly. Uh, banks serve a purpose, but we try to fix it. And this is exactly what we have to do here. When the markets fail, we have to try to fix it because the markets are the best way to allocate resources. And the job of government is to try to work to be sure they give the right signals. And that means a price for greenhouse gas emissions, a price for the emissions of carbon dioxide. It could be a tax. It could be through a cap and trade scheme. It could be implicitly through regulating uh, the kinds of things we do, for example, car emissions or the uh, building codes and so on. Right. It, it seems that, uh, you know, the devil's always in the details. Car, uh, cap and trade, for example, there are proposals that are embraced by some companies and, and some uh, conservatives that I think are a little disingenuous, where basically um, the caps are set high, the amounts, uh, the, the uh, uh, these new commodities that can be traded, basically these emission permits, are given away for free, and then you know this this so-called wonderful marketplace is going to uh, emerge. On the other hand, there are proposals where the caps are set low, the the permits are sold at a dear price that reflects the actual potential damage, uh, as you mentioned, to the atmosphere. Um, might it be easier to simply go with the carbon tax that reflects true costs? Is that calculable? What's your preference? What, uh, what, and, and what do you think is politically viable in your country and ours? And I'm sorry, we have about a minute and a half left here. I think there's a, we need a bit of each. Uh, in Europe, we have uh, quite strong taxation of gasoline. But then on the other hand, uh, covering 40% of European emissions coming from electricity, steel and the like, we have a cap-and-trade scheme. Mm -hmm. And uh, with a cap-and-trade scheme, you've got the advantage of knowing the amount of emissions you're going to allow with a tax scheme because of uncertainty, you're not quite sure. Um, taxes are, in some cases, more easy to administer than a cap-and-trade scheme. So there are pros and cons. Cap-and-trade allows us to seek out cheaper um, ways of cutting back on carbon uh, in other places. So there are pros and cons, and I think we're going to need uh, a mixture of the two. I like the idea that the cap-and-trade scheme gives you definiteness through the amount of permits uh, you allocate. Um, is it your sense good. that cap and trade is working in Europe? Yes, we've. Uh, it's, it's only about four years old. We made a lot of stupid mistakes at the beginning, like uh, giving out too many caps, mm -hmm. uh, and of course the price uh, went very low. And we have to move to auctioning. I mean, we shouldn't give away the right to uh, emit these things. Uh, there's no God-given right to emit anything. Right. Um, there's an adjustment, of course. You have to get from where we are now to where we want to go. So some move towards auctioning at a, a reasonable pace is fair enough. But we have to be clear that the uh, objective should be uh, to auction 100%. Of course, everybody who thinks they might be given them would say, yes, please give them to me. But yes. Well, 
why wouldn't they? Yeah, and let me sell them and make a profit, and and uh, let's uh, get back into the AIG business here. Or something. For for example. Yeah, and 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 then he'll, we'll have derivatives going along with those. Anyway, the the book is the Global Deal: Climate Change and the Creation of a New Era of Progress and Prosperity. The author, Lord Nicholas Stern, and a, a marvelous, insightful, thoughtful. A detailed look at the actual situation with regard to global climate change and carbon emissions in particular. I highly recommend it. Uh, Lord Stern, Nick, thank you so much for being with us. Pleasure to talk to you, Tom. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good talking with you. 16 minutes past the hour.